The Operation Positive Identification begins today despite the discerning voices opposing it. And can governors and lawmakers look for other ways to empower people other than hiring so many aides? This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Welcome. The Defence Headquarters has said that the Operation Positive Identification, OPI, which is slated to begin today, is meant to flush out foreign combatants infiltrating our borders and conducting attacks, and would therefore focus mainly on bandits and criminal elements. The Chief of Army Staff, General Tokoburatai, has also stated that the OPI would not hinder the day-to-day -day activities of Nigerians. Among those who have voiced criticism of the operation, are Femi Falanosan, Nigerian Bar Association, and the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights. Joining me to discuss this is a political analyst, Babashola Adegui. Thank you very much for joining us Happy on the program. They're explaining things. They've appeared before the House of Representatives. You, you know, before now, that was part of the recommendation that they should come and explain what has happened. Now, they're saying the exercise, which apparently is going to take place, whether we want it or not, uh, is to flush out foreign combatants infiltrating our borders and conducting attacks. They've dis decimated them, decimated them rather, from their stronghold up north. My question is, is it not to harass citizens as they're trying to clarify? What are your thoughts? Well, um, thank you very much. The operation positive identity being introduced or to be exercised by the Nigerian army, for me, it is beyond their primary responsibilities. But for the reasons they give, I'm yet to know how they'll be able to identify a foreigner among us, most especially the so-called combatants, who are most likely to be like Nigeria, like me, or you. You get Anybody can claim to be Niger. I, un I the understanding I have is that in the northern part of the country, most especially the states that are very close to the border, you, that there is there is a very slight difference between knowing who is in Nigeria and who is not in Nigeria over there. They are mostly maybe full of They are people of the same culture. It's just that the boundaries separated them. So I'm trying to understand how the Nigerian army is. It, it, we make that work out by recognizing a foreigner among us. Carrying an ID card, collecting an ID card, looking at it is not a solution. They are, have been, the, the borders have been porous for a very long time. Although it could be a step to it, because I read in the newspaper where they said that they did something like that or something similar in, in the, the northern North part. East, yeah. And it yielded results whereby they were able to arrest the leaders or commandants of the Combatant. So, for me, if it yielded positive, let's see what will happen. But it is not their primary responsibility to stop citizens on the road and be asking them for the identification uh, card. That's number one. Then number two, the, the, the question you asked, if they are, uh, it, it will yield any result. I think I'm right. Yes, as in your thoughts basically is not, they're saying it is not to harass a citizens as is being alleged. The chief, the chief of having staff of the chief of defense uh, can state that. What about those that are going to carry out that exercise? These are guys, these are recruits, these are not commissioned soldiers. Ali, will you see a commissioned soldier on the road asking for identification? These are the people that have faced war, uh, 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 the so called Boko Haram. Uh, insurgent, and these are the same people that are bringing back to the city, coming back to the uh, to town. So there is no way you be able to separate harassment from what the officers will do. It's going to happen. Any little thing is going to. Be, you can't separate it. That's just the truth. A lot of people will be harassed. Are, I'm, I'm very sure within the next two days or three days, you start hearing negative reports about what the Nigerian having officers are doing to the citizens, all because of identification. 
Now, they may mention that any means of identification. In other words, I can go to a nearby business center and print my identification card. And once I print that, that is when an officer who is not well communicated to will now ask me that is this an education? Don't you have a Nigerian ID card? Don't you have a passport? But, it, but legitimately, Nigerians, so yes, it is your right. But we have various ways you can be identified. You, you have your work um, identification. You have the national ID card. You have the BVN number. You have so many ways you Felicity, can... Felicity, I can go to business center and I tell them, right... Adebuji Ventures ID card for me. So will you tell me there is no company like that Adebuji Ventures ID card? Will you go to CSC site, site and search for the name of that company? You, so, you seem to share the same concern with uh, a lot of persons. Let's uh, listen to Femi Falana has gone to court. Uh, we spoke to him a little earlier and uh, this is what he has to say about the operation and why he went to court. Yeah, and the the proposed uh, identification parade of Nigerians mm -hmm. is the height of illegality. As far as the Constitution is concerned, Section 217 specifically, the duty of the military, the duty of the armed forces, is to defend the country from external aggression, or rather defend the territorial integrity of the country. Why the police, Nigeria police force, under Section 215 of the Constitution, is solely empowered to maintain the internal security of the country. Therefore, the Nigeria Army has no powers whatsoever to subject civilians or subject Nigerians and foreigners mm -hmm. to any illegal search on the street. Okay. What is more, Nigerians are asked to identify themselves mm -hmm. with national identity cards, driving licenses, international passports, and voters' uh, uh, cards. Majority of Nigerians do not have any of these documents. Sure. You can be very sure such people are going to be humiliated and dehumanized. And this is why this proposed parade cannot be tolerated in any decent society. Mm -hmm. We had military rule in Nigeria for 30 years, for 30 years. On no occasion were Nigeria subjected to such degrading treatment by armed soldiers. In this particular instance, I've read the defense, sham defense, the Wobu defense put up by the chief of army staff, in fact, he has confirmed the illegality of the action by not showing the public or the National Assembly the directive of the president. Because as far as section 217 of the Constitution is concerned, it is only the president as the commander in chief of the armed forces that can deploy soldiers or the armed forces in any part of the country. No service chief has the power to wake up one day and say the society should be militarized. There are not less than five cases decided by the Federal High Court, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, where the point has been made abundantly clear that armed soldiers or armed, the armed forces should not interfere with civil activities in the country, and that the police should be empowered, the police should be equipped no. to handle internal says... security in our country. And that is the position of the law today. He raised quite a number of issues. Um, we've already taken on the infringement on you know, human uh, rights of Nigerians. And then something you were saying earlier about identification. And he is also saying that many Nigerians don't have means of identification. However, there's an aspect he pointed to um, that I want you to address. He is saying that the army chief did not present evidence to show that Buhari actually um, gave the go-ahead for this operation to uh, take place, but 
at the reps uh, committee meeting, uh, the representative of the chief of staff did say that the president was aware of the activities of the military. What is your take on that? You know, when I started, I didn't mention of the operation is not the primary responsibility of the Nigerian army. However, like he made mention of the president being the commander in chief of army staff has the right to redeploy the Nigerian army officers for whatever purpose. Now, if the representative of chief of army staff is claiming that the president is aware, not that the president has approved, being the president, president being aware is not necessarily that the president has consented to that. If he has already consented or approved that, then that should have been an evidence that would have been provided at the, uh, the House of Assembly, the House of Representatives, the National Assembly. But none was done. All they did was just verba. So how are we so sure that they even informed the president? Because the president well, the is far away. Lie. Well, I'm not saying the military lie. Not what is proven to me that they are actually saying the truth. I will not accept that statement. Okay. Uh, th there is the aspect as well of um, accusing the media of misinformation and some um, Nigerians who should know better. That's what the army is saying. That the way that it is being alleged that the exercise will be conducted. It's actually not the way the exercise will be conducted. Nobody will be harassed. Nigerians will go about their normal duties, and they will just do its more intelligence way of, to use their term, of working and conducting their operations. Would you say that we have it wrong? Maybe we're looking at this from a wrong perspective. OK. He said the media is misinforming the Nigerians. I'm very sure. It's not only the newspaper we read information or whatever social media. I'm very sure it was actually heard. It was debated at House. It was, house and it was stated there. Yes. And did they actually make mention of how it's going to be carried out? That's, that's, that's the other part of this conversation. Because the same House of Representatives, there was a committee that was set up. To, take a, to have a conversation. The committee that had this meeting with the chief of staff, they came up divided. You now had people who, was in, who were in support of the operation and those who were not in support. Now, currently, as it stands, the House of Representatives have conduct, created another subcommittee inside the same committee to look at the different positions of the two groups, one in support of the army and one. So doesn't that put up portrays the fact that maybe we're looking at this from a wrong perspective? If the members of the committees are aware of their primary responsibility, uh, responsible for defense, I don't think there should be any division within that committee. But it may be, there are some people who were looking at it from the uh, sentimental part of it. Oh, insurgent, we have experienced war in the North. Yes, there are so many of them around. But the others are looking at it from the harassment that will be deployed along with the Nigerian Army officers. And we not agree. More so, there is no evidence that the president has approved what they are trying to, the society they are trying to carry out today. So the, the creation of committee within committee is not going to solve any problem. What is going to solve any problem? What is the state of law? What, where does the law stand on this? Um, how have they been able to train the officers that will go out there to ask for citizens' uh, uh, identification? Have they trained them or they are just deploying them to the, to the town? What are those things they are to look for? What are, how are they going to treat those without means of identification? My father is in, at home now, a retiree. I'm very sure when he left his office, uh, when he retired, the ID card was dropped was dropped in his office, and now he has no means of identification. If, and if he's stopped by the road, what will he be able to present? He has never traveled out of the country. Maybe that's why he doesn't have a passport, and he doesn't have a good sight. That's why he doesn't have a car. So that may, that's why he doesn't have a, the, the driver license. So what will he be able 
to present as a means of identification. As means of identification. And what will be the judgment of the officer that is asking for such? So they need the, the Nigerian army needs to do a lot of things, most especially with their officers. And also, like I said earlier, the National Assembly should not agree to this until there is something to show that the president is actually supported. I expect the SSA to the, to the president to have come out to say something about it. Yeah, there's been um, a marked silence from the presidency, though. But let's take another perspective uh, on this conversation. We spoke earlier to a former director of DSS, and uh, he had this to say. I have to look at it from uh, different perspectives, OK? Like what my brother, uh, Barista Femi Falano, SA, and is doing is right on one side. But on the other side, too, you're going to see that in the past, we Nigerians, we have slept off in knowing, one, the number of people, the number that we are, our demographic characteristics. Then secondly, in knowing the number of immigrants that we have among us. Going from there, can we also look at what the rules of the military should be within the territorial integrity called Nigeria? Is it part of their functions to be determining who a Nigerian is or not? Or to be fishing out illegal immigrants or not? If they are saying yes, then what is the role of immigration? Another aspect is this. Knowing fully well the nature and character of our soldiers. I repeat again, the nature and character of our nature, I mean of, of our, soldiers. our soldiers. Are they the type of people or are they really trained to be able to handle civilians? If we want another force, aside from immigration, where is the police? Okay? Now, if you are also saying that it won't affect the movement of people, considering what I said initially, the nature and character of soldiers, let's assume I'm coming here now. You know the way Lagos is. Traffic that you cannot predict. I've looked at it that from Ojodu to this place, it will cost me one hour. But I've seen a situation whereby from road safety to beggar, instead of driving it two minutes, I spent about 15 minutes because of traffic. Okay, moving away from that traffic, probably at that uh, entrance to express, I now meet these people. They will now be asking what is not. Okay? They will say, okay, is this fake or not? Because they are not trained to identify original or fake of all those ID cards. By so doing, wasting more of my time. Now tell me, how will I get here on time? I will look at it also from two perspectives. One, this same brata I said the insurgents have been defeated initially, you remember. They still maintain that they've been technically defeated. Yeah, if they have been defeated. So why are they now telling us that they have infiltrated into other parts of the country? So that means if you first of all withdraw that statement, that is one. Two, if these people had moved to other parts of the country, how will they, are they trained to identify them or immigration and police? Those, those are my own, I mean, concern. Because let me tell you this, there has been some kind of gap of insincerity in between the leadership and the people, okay? People have been insinuating series of ideas, series of thinking as to why they now want to bring in the soldiers are not trained to handle civilians. We have to look at precedents. We have to look at what the government has done in the past and what, what are the outcomes, what are the concomitant effects on the people. 
before we can now say yes. We tr and that's why I say initially, there have been a kind of a gap of mistrust between the people. Andy. Okay, a quick correction there. That was my conversation with a political technocrat yesterday, Dr. Dayo Kayode. Um, I still have my guest in the studio. We'll just take a quick reaction to that video and then we'll continue this conversation. Well, I agree with you in some aspects whereby you made mention of the uh, involving the Nigerian police officers and the immigration. Those are the people who are actually trained to uh, identify uh, the, the illegal immigrants. And the Nigerian police officer also has that right to ask for your identification card anywhere. Now, what uh, another thing we mentioned of is that if uh, if the Nigerian army officers are as they have actually um, they defeated the insurgents as they claim that uh, that then they should not be talking about infiltration. Yes, <laughs> for me. It's possible for them. I'm not, I'm not agreeing with them whether they are defeated or not. For what I know is that there is, I possibly thought of infiltration by these so-called members of uh, uh, the Boko Haram insurgent. Because the Aruma Bisson, who was very lucky not to have been killed, would look for an opportunity to find his way back to the town and hereby, maybe I, hereby create um, more problem trying to get more soldiers is very easy to do that. So for me, the Nigerian army officer needs to, uh, the chief of army officer needs to work hand in hand with the inspector general of police and the, um, the immigration uh, a DG. That's an IMDG. It has to work with the two of them, and the, uh, after that, get their officers, train them. Maybe they will be the one that will be able to tell this is the way you guys well, do, do about it. Do we have time for this? That's the, the, the question. We're I'm very about sure. Term training. I'm very sure the planning did not start yesterday. They have this in mind for maybe a month or two months ago. In everything you do, always involve the right people. Yes, it's, you are just an aspect of a Nigerian sector security. of security. You get. You have other people who have been trained specially for different things. You can't tell the immigration officer to be doing the work of the custom officers. No. So what they ought to have done is to have so is to have involved all these people that have been trained to do so. Whether we have time or not, for me there is nothing wrong in still involving them now. Okay, I want to. This question has been playing um, on my mind since we started this conversation, and from a layman perspective. The entire publicity around this operation identification, um, isn't it excessive? Considering the fact that, from what the army chief has said, they are looking for fleeing bandits and terrorists. This information that is now in the public space, wouldn't this make the people go underground further and you know, find a way to disguise themselves? Because they now know that the army is on the lookout wouldn't it be better if all of this is done a little secretively? Well, sometimes I find it very difficult to understand those people in the security uh, sector of this country. There are some information that shouldn't have come out. Even that is what you intend to do. You can't come out and tell me the reason why we are doing this is because we want to identify the, uh, the bandits within the society. Definitely, if I'm a member of that bandit, I know I will have to go to one village and hide there and be a big boy so that people there would quickly love me and start, uh, what's it called, uh, getting the loyalty from them. I will try as much as possible to run away to somewhere that it will come to Lagos whereby nobody knows me and uh, I'm within the community whereby uh, within Lagos whereby if I say ha, they understand, everybody understand. Definitely will be able to do that. Then, uh, uh, for them to have come out to say all these things is not helping security. That's why sometimes I listen to them say, oh, we, the military has been trained, so we are somewhere, because I've heard the Nigerian army officers or the head of the army officers military mentioning their plans on here is not done for security of the officers and for security of the citizens and for you to overcome. You don't spill out some things. Okay, let, let's look at the case filed by Falano, who is apparently a very concerned Nigerian. Do you expect the court action to amount to much? Well, um, on that, I will not be able to say a lot. But uh, from the constitution aspect of it, I expect 
Femi Falano should come out victoriously. But you know, sometimes in Nigeria, the pass the uh, the perception of the the judge sitting of giving that ruling might be different from what uh, Femi Falano has brought to the court. And let's not forget, there was a time even the president made mention of that the the the, uh, the security of the law is uh, is more important than the rule of law. Yeah, sorry, the security of the country is more important than the rule of I can't remember how you said it verbally, but something like that. So maybe or maybe not, depending on the person that is sitting or going to give a ruling or that uh, 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 the petition. petition, depends on that perception of the person. All right, thank you very much for your perspective on this conversation. It's a pleasure. All right, thank you for staying with us. Up next is the number of aides attached to a political leader. How much? It's too much. Stay with us.